Today I'm going to work through um, an approach to making a seamless tiling image from grass, and we're going to follow roughly the tutorial at psdtutsplus.com, how to turn a texture into a seamlessly tiled background. Now, in this tutorial, they send us to Flickr to get a really nice photo of some grass. And if you follow this link here, it takes you to Flickr. This is the image. We can view that large would be our goal. And this is the image which you can save and download to the location of your choice. Now, I've already, I've already done that, and I've given it the name Flickr Grass, or Grass Flickr. And I'm going to take and open this in Photoshop now. Here it is. Now before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and save this as a Photoshop file so I can keep track of my steps. Save as. And I'm going to call this Tile Grass and change it to Photoshop, which will keep all the layers that I'm going to be working with. All right. Now one of the first steps is to try and find the best part of this image that we can use to easily repeat um, as a tiling image. One of the things we want to avoid is this grass, I mean, I'm sorry, the leaf in the middle of the grass. And I'd like to try and take an area that is as uniform as possible in color. And so if I take a portion of the center area that will probably give us the best shot, I'm going to go to my crop tool. This is an image that's uh, slightly over a thousand pixels wide and near a little, little over 750 pixels tall. So I can probably do a crop area that's 400 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall and it will fit in the space. I just need to make sure that my crop area is at least 400 pixels in each direction so that I don't get a pixelated result. I'm going to drag this out. I'm going from roughly 250 to uh, 750. That'll actually give me 500 pixels of space to work with. If I go back closer to 650, that would work too. So I'm actually going to go in that direction and uh, take a crop just like that. I'm going to use my arrow keys and move that over just a tad. That area right there, I'm going to commit to that. Gives me a nice, relatively uniform looking, repeating grass texture. Not ready to repeat yet though, I'm going to need to do a little bit of work. I like to make copies of my images to copy it as a new layer so that I can always come back to this one if I want. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, Layer via Copy or Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. And I'm going to name this one Grass Base. Use that as my base layer. Save this. Now the next step they recommend is to dodge any areas that are too dark. I don't have much of that going on because of how aggressively I cropped this, but the dodge tool is here. And I'll make a copy of this, Command J, and call this my dodge layer. And I'll just experiment with dodging a little bit. Dodge, and I'll give myself a nice large brush with soft edges. So I've chosen size 150 pixels, zero hardness. That way there's no abrupt rough edges on this. I've actually put the exposure at 50% so that it works in small increments. I'll just brighten up a few areas which seem maybe a little bit darker than the others. That's it. That's all I'm going to do for dodging. Let's move on. The next step, using a method that this tutorial saves for the end, I'm going to make a copy of the dodge layer and I'm going to call this Offset Patching. I'm going to use the Offset Filter and the Patch Tool. We want to make sure that the edges are not visible by the time we're done with this. The way to check that will be to use the filter Other Offset. The last option 
way down there, other offset under filters. And let's start by working with the vertical. I'm going to move this number to 100 pixels from the top is where this will put this. Wrap around we want. I'm previewing it and so I can see that this is where it's moving the top edge. And it's wrapping the bottom edge around to the top so I can see the top edge is going to show an edge between it and the next tile. I'm going to click OK to commit to this. Now we're going to use the patch tool. The patch tool is right here underneath the eyedropper tool and uh, click and hold. You might have seen the spot healing brush tool first or the healing brush patch tools underneath that. Now the trick is to take and draw a sort of jagged line all the way around our visible line here. If I make it jagged it's going to be harder to detect our patch job. So now I'll click from inside and drag out and I can see what I'm going to get to replace that area. I'm going to try and drag it far enough to where it doesn't look like an exact repetition. Let's see how that looks. Now I can go to select and deselect or command D. That really looks pretty good. Now the goal is to repeat that and do it the other direction. So filter other offset. This time we're going to put 0 for the vertical offset and 100 pixels for the horizontal offset. This will give us a line that's showing up 100 pixels from the left edge. You can barely see that here. Let's commit to that. I'm going to zoom in. I'll do a command plus or control plus to zoom in. I can barely see a line here. It'd be nice just to clean that up a little. So still using the patch tool. I'm sorry. There it is, which I've still got selected. I'll draw again, jagged edges around this line. Take it all the way around. And then drag over to the right. Make it harder to detect that. I want to keep it exactly in line here so I cover the whole area. Command D or Control D to deselect. That's looking good going to save that. Nice result. Now if I want to check my work, I can repeat it one more time just to see what happens when I offset it differently. Will I see the edges? I don't really see edges when it's offset horizontally. I can add vertical offset at the same time. And normally I would see some pretty clear lines if I've got problems and I really don't see clear lines. This looks like good work. I'm actually going to cancel that because I don't need to offset it. I just wanted to check it. So I'll cancel this now and uh, save this. And when I zoom back out, you can see that looks really pretty nice. So now the last step is to save this and then save it for the web file. Save for web and devices. We've got lots of colors, no transparency. So we'll use JPEG High. And I can experiment with how big I want this image to be at 400 pixels wide. Boy, these grass blades are really obvious. And it's taking up 87 kilobytes of space. If I take this down to a 200 pixel square image, it still looks like grass. It's going to be a little bit less um, obvious. The grass blades are going to be there, visible. And it should repeat nicely and saves me a lot on file size, 23.74K. That's the one I'm going to use. Save that. Save it as JPEG. Grab beside my other one so I can find it later. That's it.